my senior colleague in the Council of Ministers, Nitinji, who has rightly been described by Sachin as the dynamic guiding force in the overall economy and in the context of our infrastructure, distinguished uh, panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in any discussion on infrastructure, no matter which way you approach the discussion, you ultimately come down to the issue of resources. Therefore, I am very happy to see uh, uh, this initiative by the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, that and the establishment of the uh, BRICS Bank uh, somewhat earlier, uh, the presence of the representatives of the World Bank, the uh, Asian Development Banks, and all of you here, I think hopefully uh, augur as well and that the issue of resources will be um, dealt with in a more uh, upfront, equitable manner. Now, if you look at estimates, uh, but before I talk about estimates and a few remarks that I wish to make, I personally don't see any reason why I am speaking, uh, considering that uh, you will have an outstanding keynote speaker and uh, a very distinguished panel. But since the program has been so structured, let me make one or two submissions. No matter which way you look at it, uh, India's requirement for funds for infrastructural development, let's say over the period of the next uh, 20 years or so, is according to various estimates should be around US dollars 4.5 trillion or so. I personally don't think that's a very large amount for an economy which is presently a 2.5 trillion dollar economy and well before the uh, time phase is over we will be a 5 or 6 trillion dollar economy. So to look at 4.5 trillion dollars it should be available. I am personally of the view that there is never a shortage of funds either domestically or outside provided one is in a position to come up with what I call bankable projects and our problems actually lie elsewhere. And uh, I think Nitinji has demonstrated during the last, um, uh, uh, you know, 35, 36 months or so, um, actually um, during the post-May 2014, that uh, given political will and given uh, determination, uh, the funds uh, can be accessed. And I think this is what makes our discussion uh, today uh, in this session uh, so much more focused and uh, hopefully productive. Now, insofar as my ministry is concerned, um, I am new and therefore uh, you will forgive me if I uh, make pronouncements on which you can quarrel on the, with the nuance, but I can tell you that no way at it, um, and I've been down from time in other professions. Uh, what the Prime Minister has launched post May 2014 is perhaps the most ambitious intervention in planned urbanization which has been undertaken in any democracy. I choose my words carefully. Uh, if you look at the various schemes, uh, flagship programs which are anchored in my ministry, uh, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana or the uh, Affordable Housing Scheme, uh, this stipulates that by the year 2022, every Indian uh, will have a home which she, he or she can call their own. The other distinguishing features of this scheme are one, that government will make the land available. And in the eight options which I outlined um, a few uh, months ago when I had just joined, uh, six of those eight options involve, um, you know, PPP models, in six involving government land and two uh, involving private land. The second uh, very innovative and powerful decision is that the title of the home will be in the name of the lady of the house. And the, that actually uh, gives a fillip to gender empowerment uh, and also gives dignity to the girl child and a host of other um, attendant um, advantages. 
according to a study which was undertaken in 2011, the gap in housing was placed at something like uh, 18 million. But when we asked the states and the um, uh, union territories to do the validation and assessment on the ground, we are today working against a figure out of about 11 to 12 million. And I'm very happy to inform you that in the um, few months, um, uh, uh, in, the, in the period, in the last few months itself, this scheme has really gained traction. Uh, Nitinji was asking me how the scheme was uh, flourish, uh, uh, faring, and I mentioned to him that in the month of uh, December, uh, for the credit link subsidy scheme, and I'll come to that in a minute, uh, we sanctioned uh, 564,000 units in December. Uh, in, on February the 7th, we sanctioned 184,000. We have done almost 4.7 million uh, 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 is, the, is the latest uh, target that I, I, I am working on. Uh, I was at the World Urban Forum and the, the target then was, uh, I think we had done 40 uh, uh, lakhs or uh, 4 million and today I think it's ev even higher. So the issue is not whether the scheme um, is, is popular, it's gaining traction. Now we have to ensure that we have the uh, funds available and that's where Mr. Pandian and all the others uh, that I see here uh, and whom I'm, we are talking to in a serious way, they all come in. Uh, equally, the, the scheme has several um, uh, unique features. It has um, you know, outright subsidies by the central government and the state government, provision of land, those of you who know uh, what the cost of a home can be, know that 40 to 80 percent can be taken up by the cost of land. Um, and then a credit link subsidy scheme. In other words, let's take the, the scheme covers the economically weaker section, lower income group and the middle income group. Let's say typically if the, um, for a EWS economically weaker section, let's say if the cost of the uh, unit is say six and a half, seven lakhs. So the subsidy from the center would be along with funding we have to ensure and we are ensuring that uh, the uh, technologies used are green technologies that um, uh, you are we, we are in a position to access those this year my ministry uh, will be launching which I already announced but we'll be fleshing this initiative out a global housing technology and construction challenge where global players will be uh, competing with the technologies and we just had uh, one such two-day seminar the other day at the Habitat Center and I'm delighted to find that the domestic operators are also vying with each other to produce that. I don't want to uh, go on because these days uh, uh, after having left the world of uh, diplomacy and foreign and security policy, I think uh, my fixation on urban uh, space as well. But I just want to leave you with some statistics. Between now and 2030, we will need to build something like 700 to 900 million square meters of space every year, residential and commercial, between now and 2030, every year. In other words, 70% of the India of 2030 has not even been built yet. So I mentioned that as an economic opportunity and I... Uh, uh, underline that point when I see uh, representatives of uh, uh, the multilateral financial institutions and all of you being present here. And this charge, of course, um, has to be led by Nitinji, who, whose overall framework and program and the infrastructure section. But I think it also, the urban space, and let me give you the final statistic. Uh, when we became an independent country, 17% of us in India lived in urban areas. But remember that was 17% out of a population of only 300 million. Uh, the last census we have was 2011 census, which by which time 30% of India had moved into uh, urban spaces, but that was 30% out of a population base of 1.2 billion plus. By 2030, we will have 600 million people living in urban spaces. And that 600 million people uh, will need all the modern infrastructure. Now, anyone who has even a nodding acquaintance with uh, environmental issues knows that a house, a home, or a building produces 40 to 45% of the carbon footprint. 
So if we get our building technology right and we get our uh, uh, overall um, use of technology right in infrastructure, etc., we will be not only bringing that 40% plus carbon footprint to neutrality, but then we can have our buildings and infrastructure emitting positive energy. So it's a win-win, and I think we have surely reached a stage, thanks to the Prime Minister's initiative, where we are moving from what was described in the West, we were described in the West as reluctant urbanizers, now to embracing the urban opportunity uh, in order to make um, the urban space. As it is, 66% of our GDP comes from the uh, cities and 90% of the tax uh, uh, collection. But when we move to 2030, it's going to be very much higher. And if you look at the history of other countries, particularly China, you know that infrastructure and housing is the way forward. So thank you very much. I hope I have not taken more than the time allotted. But we, I will now invite uh, Nitinji to uh, make, provide the keynote address and then we will have a discussion. Thank you.